Today, uh, let's look First Corinthians chapter three. First Corinthians chapter three, verse sixteen. First Corinthians chapter six, chapter three. First okay. Corinthians chapter three, verse sixteen. Let me read. Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit lives in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him. For God's temple is sacred and you are the temple. Let's look at another verse, another chapter. Same book, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12. <coughs> 1 Corinthians chapter 6, okay, we can read from verse 18. <coughs> Flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a man commits are outside his body. But he who sins sexually sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. <clears throat> Today's title of the message is from verse, uh, chapter 3, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. You are the God's temple. You are the God's temple. So the Bible verses today uh, really teaches us how to view uh, our body, okay, our body. Okay. So some people pay a lot of attention on their spirit. As right? so a Christian, you know, spirit, spirit matters a lot. Uh, not on the body. <coughs> Vice versa, some place, some people pay a lot of attention to the body, on the body, right? Rather than uh, their spirituality. But you can say, you know, both, both needs to be balanced well. So I delivered lots of messages on, your, on our spirituality, on the message. Then today, particularly, I want to share the biblical understanding about our body. Okay. So when you study uh, early church history, there were some you know, wrong teachings. Uh, it's called you know, Gnosticism. Gnosticism. I don't know uh, if, you, if you heard about this. But even <coughs> still today, uh, there are many ideas and thoughts uh, in our uh, culture influenced by these ideas, Gnosticism. So what, what is Gnosticism? They claim that the body is evil. Uh, and <clears throat> they believed the material is evil, the only spirit is good. So they even said that Jesus did not come with the flesh because flesh is evil. So he came only with the spirit. That's how they believed. They denied uh, that Jesus was born with the flesh. Okay. So how do you look at your body? Is it evil <laughs> or is it good? Yeah. Okay, let's look at another you know, examples. Not only these heretical, you know, heretical teachings, but also there were very faithful believers and teachers of the church practiced it, you know, asceticism. Asceticism means, you know, they train their body, uh, and they, they, they train their body uh, very strictly. Uh, they limit their food from their food, and they, you know, uh, let's say, uh, they just eat a little food on the desert, in, on the wilderness. And then they tra train their body very strictly. So their ba basic understanding of the body is very negative. They think that the body is all source of evil. Now, with our body, we do some you know, very bad things. Uh, so we are fallen <coughs> and very sinful. Now, what we do with our body is all evil things. So they you know, strictly you know, train their body not to sin. So I think one side of this is very true, isn't it? But today I want to focus more on the you know, positive things. No, based on the Bible, how
how Bible understands about body. First, let's look at today's passage, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and chapter 6. If you look chapter 6 and from chapter 3, he over and over said the same thing. Don't you know that you are, your body is the temple of God. Your body is the temple of God. If you go to chapter 6, chapter 6. God's spirit dwells in your, in your midst. God's temple is sacred and you should be holy also. And in chapter 6, he said, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You are bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. Honor God with your body. Why he keeps saying the same thing over and over? Because there were many you know, corrupted situations. Um, many, you know, corrupted, you know, sexually. If you look right before this verse, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 from 14, uh, from, from 15. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? Should I then take the members of Christ and unite them with a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her in body? For it is said, the two will become one flesh. But he who unites himself with the Lord is one with him in spirit. Free from sexual immorality, all other sins a man commits are outside his body. But he who sins sexually sins against his own body. Right? So we can see very clearly why he said, because they were in Corinthians, in Corinth, the city in the Corinthians, many people were very corrupted sexually. Do you not know that? Do you not know that? We are the temple of God. Right? The city Corinthians back then was a harbor city. Um, it's a port. So it's a, the trade and business were very active and prosperous. The city was very rich. But at the same time, the people in Corinthians were very corrupted. More, you know, particularly you know, sexually. So what Paul said, the one who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her in the body. Because the two will become one flesh. The two become one flesh. Actually, this verse was from Genesis. From the Genesis. Genesis chapter, Genesis chapter 2. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 2. When God creates Adam and Eve, and then they unite as a husband and wife. This is what God said. Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. Genesis chapter 2, verse 24 and 25. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and they will become one flesh. The man and his wife were both naked, but they, left, they felt no shame. So this is this the, the one, the, the body become one flesh. <coughs> so Paul is using this example of the relationship of Adam and Eve. Tells us that whom you are united with, your body, this is the one whom you belong to. If you are united with a prostitute with your body, you belong to the prostitute. Vice versa, if you are united with the Lord, you belong to the Lord with him in spirit. All other sins a person commits are outside the body, but whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. So flee from sexual immorality. I think this is very important teachings for this generation, <coughs> Abs you know, particularly for the young people. By the time the sexual immorality was um, regarded as one of the severe sins, in the old days, but it is you know, look at this you know these days, it's too common, isn't it? We don't even have a strong sense of sin in terms of this, because it you know it's too common. Yeah. Having a, you know this sexual relationship before the marriage is very common these days. 
we have a very same problem like 2,000 years ago. And this sickness has spread widely, like in the movies, right? posters, and other entertainments. And it takes away our eyes and our hearts. So we need to keep our heart from this fallen world, especially uh, from this you know, sin. Then let's look at how the Bible understands the body. Now why God gave us this body? Okay. First, our body is like a bowl. It's an instrument. Oh. Let's look at first, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy chapter two, verse twenty. Second Timothy chapter two, verse twenty through twenty one. <coughs> In a large house, there are articles not only of gold and silver. Also of good uh, wood and clay, some are for noble purposes and some for ignoble. If a man cleanses hum himself from the latter, he will be an instrument for noble purposes, made holy, useful to the master, and prepared to do any good work. Okay. Flee the evil desires of youth, and pursue righteousness, faith, love and peace along with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Right. So we are, we are like articles, like in a bowl. It's a container. So it's a bowl. You know, it's, we hold something inside. Right. So our body is like a bowl. We hold something inside in our spirit. In our you know, spirit. So let's look at this. What's, in a, what's inside? Now what's inside of a heart right. is very important. So there are many, you know, in, in a large house, there are many different bowls. You know. There were some, some of them were made of gold and silver, or wood and clay. So our beings, uh, how God created us in a very different purposes, in a very different shapes, and then we may, you know, we have, may have different talents, even. Right? Some people have, a, you know, maybe you no know, greater talents than other people. But here, what he wants to say, what can be used among them? Which bowl can be used? It's only the, if a man cleanses himself from the latter, he will be an instrument for noble purposes. So how God looks at us, it doesn't matter uh, how much you have, what is made of. You are you know, gold or silver or wood and clay, it doesn't matter. But what matters, what's inside? Is it clean or not? Isn't it? It's clean or not. So think about this. In a bowl, if I put rice, it becomes a rice bowl, isn't it? In a bowl, I put treasure. It becomes a treasure bowl. Okay. So what's inside? It defines its value, right? No, I don't, I don't like you know, one fruit. Uh, name is durian. You know durian? <laughs> it smells awful. You know, I don't know. You know. Durian, you don't know? The smells very strong and then uh, how to say in Chinese? Ah, liu lian, yeah, liu lian. <laughs> it, it smells awful, isn't it? It's, I, yeah, I know somebody like the fruit, but you know, even if you know from the, um, you know, one mile away, you can smell this, you know, <laughs> even you know. So, the smell. If you have uh, good things in your heart, it smells good. It's not because of you, you know, spread the perfume, it smells good. But what's in your heart uh, defines, you know, decide what you say, how you act, doesn't it? If in, in your heart, 
if you have a love, whatever you say, however you do, it delivers. There is a smell of love, isn't it? If you have, you know, hatred in your heart, the word that you speak, the, the action that you do, you're going to hurt other people. So, what's in your heart? What's in our heart is very important. Right? So, we need to take care of our, you know, inside. Not just, you know, have passion on your wear, passion of your clothes, and then, you know, makeup. No. More than this, we really need to check out what's in our heart. Whether my, you know, my heart is clean or not, pure, or become, you know, dirty again, right? What kind of bowl can be used by the master? In the same, what kind of person, what kind of body can be used by God as his instrument? Is a bowl or a vessel more than what is made of, either made of gold or silver or wood or clay? Paul said, what is more important is to be clean. Right? Some are for special purposes, some for common use. Those who cleanse themselves from the latter will be instrument for special purpose, made holy, useful to the master, and prepared to do any good work. So, Flee from the evil desires of youth. Clean yourself. No. Clean, clean ourselves. Flee the evil desires. Flee from the evil desires of youth. Evil desires of youth. No. What are evil desires in our hearts? If you continue the sec, the Second Timothy, chapter three, chapter three. He said, but mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, Treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, have nothing to do with them. These are the things that happened in the last days. So, in the you know corrupted world, in a sinful world, these are the things. So leave from this, leave from this, turn away from that. Not only this, you know, we Christians, uh, for example, you no, know, we don't smoke or drink alcohol because we don't want to, you know, pollute our body with these things. Right? We want to be cleaned, but we don't force people. Ah, oh, you shouldn't, you know, smoke. You shouldn't drink alcohol like that. We don't preach like that because. If you have the word of God in your heart, if you receive the Holy Spirit in your heart, other desires will be gone. Will be go away. You will be going away. So, first, you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You need to be filled with the Word of God. Then the other, you know, sinful <coughs> desires will be gone. Okay. I like washing dishes. You like washing dishes? No. These days, um, my first son is washing dishes for, it's been, you know, he's been doing for uh, more than two years. So I don't have much time to washing dishes. But sometimes I, you know, I need to do it. Then I like, really like doing, you know, doing this, washing dishes. I feel like, ah, oh, it's refreshed, right? When I, whenever I wash dishes, think like, oh, I need to be washed. <laughs> you know, really, I need to be washed like this. <laughs> I want somebody just to wash me like this. <laughs> Whenever you do the, you know, laundry, you know, your dirty clothes can be, you know, it's cleaned, right? And fresh air in the clothes. So I like this. Ah, refreshed. So our spirit needs to be renewed like this. Refreshed. And then cleaned again. 
Okay. So then how can we be cleaned? How can you be clean? How can you clean ourselves? Actuality, we cannot clean, we cannot clean by ourselves. We cannot be cleaned by ourselves. If you look, I, I'm gonna read other verses. Who can clean us? How can you be cleaned? It's, a, it's only by the word of God, the truth of God. Lord, He's gonna clean us by His word, by His word. Okay, let's look at uh, John chapter 15. John chapter 15, verse 3. John chapter 15, verse 3. John chapter 15, verse 3. Remain in me. I'll remain in you. Oh, sorry. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Yeah. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. He said to the, his disciples, right? You are already clean by the word I have spoken to you. So his word, you're going to clean us. Let's look another chapter. First Timothy. Let's go back to that Timothy. First Timothy chapter 4. First Timothy chapter four, verse four through five. First Timothy chapter four, verse four through five. For everything God created is good, and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving, because it is consecrated by the word of God and prayer. Even the food. If you take it with a thanksgiving, nothing is bad. Why? Because it is consecrated by the word of God and prayers. Right? It's cleaned. Ephesians chapter 5. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 26. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians is in the New Testament. We need, we need to be a really good. Uh, you need to be good, good at you know, finding Bible verses. Right? It's a, you, need to, I think you need to take a test, you know, memorize all the orders. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26. Mm -hmm. say, to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word. Right? <clears throat> to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word. And then one last one. First John. First John is the kind of end of the New Testament, right before Revelation. First John chapter one, verse nine. <coughs> First John chapter one, verse nine. First John chapter one, verse nine. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If, if we confess our sins, you're going to clean us. You're going to clean us. So by the, word of, by the word of God, by the word of God, so listening to God's word, the spirit of God enters in our hearts and it cleans. He's doing the laundry right now. <laughs> He's washing our hearts right now. Uh, he's taking away all our thoughts, uh, our, our thoughts, our desires. 
and they clean, clean us, become a new creation. Right? So when we confess our sins, God will forgive our sins. Right? Forgive here. So repentance, asking for God's forgiveness. Whenever you do the something not right, immediately we need to come back to God and forgive, asking for the forgiveness. So repenting hurt is very important. And the forgive, what forgive means? Forgive means he will never remember that. Forgiveness is meaning, it's, it means he's not going to remember that again. Okay. About forgiveness, I want to share one story you know, told by Philip Yancey. Philip Yancey is a very famous Christian author. And he said in, a, in this story in his book, there's a one man who falls into the you know, chronic habit of sin. He constantly commit the same sin and over and over. He made a promise to God that he'll never sin again. But the promise is failed all the time. And he was very despaired. We, it happens to us, right? And he's still committing the same sin over and over and came to God and said, Oh, oh Lord, you know, I'm dying because of my shame. I sin again. I confess my sin. I want to promise you that I'm never the same. Can you forgive me? And then there's a voice from heaven. I forgive you. I forgive you. Okay? Everything, everything is forgotten and you are cleaned. So we can, you can restart. Okay? He felt you know, tremendous freedom. And he told himself that, oh, what can I ask more? Right? And rest of the day, yeah, I have conviction that I won't fall into the temptation again. But the same night, in the same night, came a temptation. And he failed again. And then he didn't have any strength to you know, come back to God and to pray. Oh, I, you know, he said to himself, I just made a promise to God. But I sinned again. His guilty feeling overwhelmed in his heart. So he started to pray again. Oh Lord, I don't know what I can do. I commit the same sin again and again. And God asked him, What sin you are talking about? And he said, The sin that I, I told you in the morning. And God said, I don't remember. I don't remember that. Right. Yeah. Our sins is forgotten. When we confess our sins, God is faithful. It's erased. Right. So whenever we really, we are, we are like this. We are like this man. We made a promise. Right? We make a promise all the time. I don't want to do it again. <coughs> But fall into the same, you know, temptation. I'm so weak. But whenever we come to God asking for the forgiveness, God forgives us. Really. God doesn't remember that. Okay. So, how can we be cleaned? We confess our sins. God's word. God's word. God is faithful. God, He's gonna clean us. He's gonna clean us. But what I want to say, what I want to recommend, more than just repenting, we need to go more actively and powerfully by doing the things that can please God according to His will, why He gave us our body. So let's go back to Second Timothy. Let's read the, all the sins that people commit in the last days. So we can do oppositely. Mm -hmm. You know, you can do opposite way. So let's read this in the opposite way. First Timothy chapter, Second Timothy chapter three. Second Timothy chapter three, verse two. Second Timothy chapter three, verse two. He said, "People will be lovers of themselves." So we can read like uh, lovers for other people, right. not the lovers of the money. Be humble and 
abusive. How to say? In the opposite of abusive is what? Gentle. Yeah, gentle. <laughs> And obedient to their parents. Be grateful, be holy, and with love and forgiving. Then slanderous, what's the opposite of the slanderous? I think it's modest, right? modest. With self-control, what is the opposite of brutal? Self-discipline. Uh, Self-control yeah, yeah, self and be generous. Lovers of the good. And be faithful, be patient. What is the opposite of conceited? What do you think? Hmm? Simon? <laughs> humble. humble? Is it humble? humble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lovers of all pleasure. Yeah, lovers of the lovers of God. Having a form of godliness and its power, have this power, the power of godliness means in your life, you live with this you know, virtue. We live with it, not denying the power, but we need to reveal the power. Okay? So this is more active. Use your body to live like this, to live according to the will of God. So this is the purpose why God gave us the body. It is to love others. It is to serve others. We need to use our body accordingly. And second, well, I want to add one more. Not only to be clean, okay? our hearts to be emptied. Need to be empty, empty heart. What does it mean? I just mentioned that you know, the bowl must be clean, right, in order to be used. But at the same time, it must be emptied, isn't it? Empty and clean bowl, we can use that. Even though it is pretty and then it is clean, but if there's something is holding in there, we cannot use that. So we need to be, we need to be emptied out. You need to empty it out. So that it can be filled according to the purpose of the master. These days, <clears throat> we are sharing a book with uh, some students, uh, The Purpose Driven Life. The book name is The Purpose Driven Life, written by uh, Rick Warren in the church in LA. So the author you know, begins with this phrase. The first chapter, he said, do you know what is the first chapter? You, I think somebody you guys are reading this, right? It is not about you. The first phrase of the book is that, uh, It is not about you. The purpose of your life is far greater than your own personal <coughs> fulfillment, your peace of mind, or even your happiness. Your purpose of your life is greater than uh, your family, your career, or even your dreams and ambitions. If you want to know why you are placed on this planet, you must begin with God. You are born by His purpose, and for his purpose. We ask self-centered self -centered questions like, what do I do? I, what do I want to be? Or what should I do with my life? Right? What are my goals, my ambitions, my dreams for my future? But he said, focusing on ourselves will never reveal our life's purpose. You must begin with God, our Creator. I think this is really true. We have goals, isn't it? We set goals, we set you know, plans for our life. But before that, we need to ask whether it is started from God, whether it is started with God. We need to question ourselves whether all things and goals were directed by God. So I think that we need a process of emptiness, empty out, emptying out. So God's vision and dream for our life can be filled in our hearts and either direct to the right place. 
So now we are clean and emptied. Then what should you do? You need to put something really valuable okay? and precious. Okay? With what? What do you want to put in your heart? God. God. Yeah, God. In our hearts, you need to put God. Let's read. This is the last chapter of the book. No. Uh, for 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. Let's read. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that all surpassing power is from God and not from us. We have this treasure in jars of clay. We are made. We are, Paul said that we are jars of clay. We are made of clay. We are made of clay which has, which has a very humble and shabby look. But because we have a treasure in our heart, because the treasure inside, which is Jesus Christ, we became a jar of treasure. Really. So let's think about this. We are a bore. What do you want to put inside? Not the desires from the world. The desires from the world will be gone. At some, you know, at some point, right? I'm not gonna remember which you know clothes I wore, in the you know last year at the day, at the same date. I'm not gonna remember that. Right? Which movie I watched, I'm not gonna remember that. But what I remembered, the whom the people I loved, the action that I did for my loving ones, how I used my body. I want to be with those people who need me. Right? I can spend time with them, be with them when they need help. Our body. Right? So I really hope that we put Jesus Christ in our heart. His love and care, humble and compassion, and His unconditional love and His forgiveness. Right? You're going to have the fragrance of Jesus Christ in your life. Whoever you meet, they're going to smell the fragrance. Oh, you smell so good. No? Not you know, physically, but spiritually. You have a very good heart, gentle and humble, forgiving, love and compassion. Because, him, because of Him, because of Jesus Christ, we became a jars of treasure. So uh, our life is going to become so valuable and precious because of Jesus Christ. So I really hope that we remember this. We are our body is God's temple. Our body is God's temple. He wants to dwell in us. He wants to be, he wants us to be holy and sacred because we are his creation. I wish that all Croatia members use the body to glorify God. By keeping, his, keeping our body clean, pure, empty, and refilled by Jesus Christ. Now let's pray. Dear gracious Lord, you created us with your own image, which is so beautiful and holy. But in this sinful world, we are tainted by the sins and all temptations, Father. Please clean us. Please purify us so that we can recover the original image of our creation. Father, you also want to be emptied out all the things that we have in our hearts if it is not directed by God. Our desires, our goals can be misplaced and want to be replaced in the right place. Father, please use us and use our body to according to your will. Our life is very precious, and because we have Jesus Christ in us, 
Father, you want to live the life of holiness with your uh, holy purpose. Guide us and lead us. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.